wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. In a world gone mad, there's Chris Voss and the Chris Voss Show. I wasn't sure if I was going to pull that off without cracking my voice. Welcome to the big show, folks. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by. Thanks for tuning in. As always, a big hug. Much love to you, the family that loves you but doesn't judge you. The Chris Voss Show. Not Chris Voss, but the Chris Voss Show. Remember, I still will judge you, depending upon if you're wearing Crocs or not, when you meet me in person at an event or something. And here, guys, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Go refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Sit down. Do the wife thing. Sit down with them and say, honey, we need to talk. And say, we, you need to sign up for the Chris Voss Show at iTunes.com and subscribe or it's over. Anyway, guys, also go to, go to YouTube.com. I can't believe I cursed that on someone. Go to YouTube.com versus Chris Voss, Goodreads.com for it says Chris Voss. All our big groups on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all those crazy places the kids are, are playing, but you won't find the Chris Voss's Snapchat for the most obvious of reasons. Anyway, guys, we have an amazing gentleman on the show. He's a chef, so hopefully you're prepared to be either left hungry or you had a breakfast before this because you'll be hungry after. He's going to be on the show talking to us about us. He talking to us about us he's going to talk about us wow that's going to be weird he's going to talk about himself and his history and give us some of ideas and brilliant mindset george duran a chef is on the show with us today he's a polylingual chef which i think that means he makes food in different languages i don't know sure. i'll ask him when he's on the show he's a chef comedian and host and culinary contributor for Good Morning America. We've had some Good Morning America people on the show. Author of Take This Dish and Twist It, known for his Food Network show, Ham. Is that, whoops, Ham on the Street? Is that Ham on the Street? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Ham on the Street. We had the, the acrylic video holder was blocking that. And host of TLC's The Ultimate Cake Off. Take that. And that's not the name, and I added the take off the, that part. He's also appeared as guests on Live with Kelly, NBC's Today Show, CBS This Morning, The Wendy Williams Show, The Dr. Oz Show, The Tamron Show, and finally, to achieve his crown and glory of being on the greatest media shows of all time, he has joined us on The Chris Foss Show. Welcome to the show, George. How are you? Chris, what a pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me on. Oh, don't lie to us, Seth. But flattery will get you everywhere. Thanks, George. No, I'm just kidding. Thanks, George, for coming on. Give us your dot com so people can find you on those interwebs in the sky. Oh, man. It's just georgeduran.com. And then anything on social media, it's Chef George Duran. Just go at Chef George Duran and I'll be there. There you go. So, what brings you to the show today? What, 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 what's going on in your life? What's going on in George Duran world that we need to know about? Is there a holiday or something coming up? I mean, there's Labor Day coming up. I don't know if, if you are aware of that, but Labor Day is coming up. But I think we've been celebrating, you know, being part of this uh, unique country for the last few months with the whole red, white, and blue theme. And I kind of wanted to bring you a big last hurrah with some of the foods I've kind of cooked up for you. Ah, so we're going to have some tease. There's a teaser there. We're going to have some Labor Day discussions on how you can do that stuff. You know, it's a big barbecuing season. I think if my parole agent says I can get the weekend off, I might be able to go somewhere. It depends on the judge. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good luck. That's, a, that's a callback joke we've been doing for years. But uh, I'm sure someone's searching right now. Is he really kind of cool? Anyway, guys, tell us about your background and training as a chef. What made you want to be a chef? Why, why did you decide, well, I want to make things with food in my hands? You know, interestingly enough, my, my background started in radio. I worked in radio here in New York City for ah. like four years or so on the air on ABC FM radio here in New York, a station called WPLJ. And from there, I really wanted to go into the visual medium. And I started working as a, a PA and kind of an associate producer with certain cer certain shows, including on Comedy Central. I, I worked at Saturday Night Live for a very short period of time. Really? But I knew I wanted to go into television. And then from there, I just had this enormous passion for food. And I, know, I remember it was in the heydays of Food Network early on. And I used to watch it and I would say, okay, it's food, but it's not fun, at least not yet. So I decided to go into food and television, and I wanted to host without a doubt. So I ended up going to a culinary school in France. I, I, I spoke mm. numerous languages, and I wanted to better my French. 
So I ended up going to culinary school in France and going to one of the more prestigious culinary schools there, all in French, and get, got my culinary degree, numerous culinary degrees. But in the meantime, a producer had approached me out there, a friend who was a producer had approached me and they said, hey, there's a food network here that just started in France. Do you, do you have any show ideas? And I'm like, do I? So I kind of pitched them this idea of American, or I think, what was it? It was called Pop Cuisine. And it was like, it was like shortcuts on French food. And of course, uh -huh. uh, all the French people were like, how dare you? How um, dare but, you, uh, you American? How dare you shortcut our food? But there, a lot of the youth was starting to not care and not know how to cook French cuisine, which is relatively mm -hmm. difficult difficult and complicated yeah. so i was kind of offering them shortcuts and the network loved it we had a couple seasons it won a well it won it was nominated for an emmy or french emmy and it was fantastic and i got to direct it host it write it edit it everything i have full control over it and it was a huge huge hit and after three years in france it was time to get back to the u.s and pitch to the food network and you know all these other networks and now i'm on the chris foss show like amazing You're, i just mean uphill the pinnacle of a career yeah. uh, it's just it's just there's nowhere to go but down from here you know what i would have done if the french people would have given me a bad time i would have been making like eclairs in this in the shape of white flags anyway that's an old french joke damn oh, i just man. got noticed <laughs> i just got noticed we lost our one french listener Sponsor. damn it We'll yeah. miss him. All right. <laughs> he, he can go with the Jen and his ears. So if you're not watching this on the YouTube video, guys, because the podcast goes out audio, George has laid out like a master TV chef, a plethora of products and some good cookies, I think. All right, well, he'll tell us what those are. I can see some great products that we're aware of. Tell, tell us what you've got laid out before you there, because I'm getting hungry looking at it. Yeah, I want to go with like a red, white, and blue theme and mm -hmm. nice things up a little bit. And one of the, the main dishes that I love to serve throughout the holiday is hummus because it's such a simple recipe to make. And it uses one of my favorite ingredients, which is mighty sesame tahini. So everyone knows that hummus is made with garbanzo beans, lemon juice, garlic, and of course, tahini and anything else you want to add into there. But the tahini is the main thing. And this tahini has transformed. Before I started working with these guys, before I was their mm -hmm. brand ambassador, I used, I, I had, I genuinely genuinely loved and had mighty sesame tahini. And that's because it's the only tahini that comes in a squeezable jar. You shake it and mm -hmm. you open the cap and then you kind of squeeze it out. And I was like, well, hallelujah, somebody invented this finally. Because if you know tahini, you know that it's always in the jar and the solids are in the bottom and the oil's on top and you have to constantly <laughs> dig in. And this just solves it all. This is like ingenuity, like per, yeah. the, the, the most ingenious thing I've seen when it comes to tahini. And that's what I'm loving about today's world is that people are inventing these incredible hacks for you to use at home and this is one of them so what i ended up making here is a red white and blue tahini with mighty sesame tahini hummus dish it's mm -hmm. so ridiculously simple to make and i take my hummus that i make again with the mighty sesame tahini and i add i, I take the white stripes that are the regular hummus but the red ones are with beets i take beetology oh. beets they actually have pre-cooked beets and i put that inside the fruit processor with some of the hummus so that turns a bright oh. red and with the blue one over here as you can see i'm going to kind of go this way a little bit oh. but the blue one you know i, I feel figured out that if you saute red cabbage and red onions, add a little bit of baking soda, that alters the pH balance a little bit and turns oh. pretty much any food blue, kind of purplish nice. blue over here. And you're getting this incredible blue tahini, all natural, all safe to eat, yeah. everything's good. And it kind of looks like an American flag. So imagine showing up to a party with a platter with some red, white, an blue, American flag. flag tahini people are going to go nuts over it i You're think people will be like what on earth is that that is awesome serve it with some absolutely gluten-free crackers and we can talk about that too these are also part of keiko mm -hmm. this is like i'm not gluten-free but i'm going with this cracker all the time because the flavor and the texture and the mouth feel it's a term we use as chefs is is fantastic it's one of the best crackers mm -hmm. i've ever owned ever and so you just serve it with that and now you have a nice red white, white and blue themed platter now, once again, those of you who are listening, tune into the YouTube channel so you can see this or go to the Chris Foss show. You'll be able to see the video. Now, I see some other things. I see Beatology, which I'm very familiar with, and a beautiful mixed drink that makes me... Is that is there booze in that one, or is that the booze? Yeah. Drink? So this is interesting. So with Beatology and Wonder Melon, which is another kind of drink yeah, also. Look at that. So what I've done is kind of like hacks on drinks. So I've been mm -hmm. making things like mocktail margaritas for the kids to enjoy too. But also, this is a sangria, actually. So it's a white wine sangria. It's a, red, it's a very patriotic red, white, and blue sangria and it's chopped apples blueberries and raspberries or you can use strawberries as well but the secret ingredient is my wonder melon it's like this cold uh. pressed organic 
all juice. There's no artificial flavors or colors. So, you mm -hmm. know, if you're trying to get your kids away from soda, for example, this is the mm -hmm. route to take Wonder Melon. Oh, uh, but yes. they have really interesting flavors too. This one is particularly interesting. This is watermelon, lemon, and cayenne. So it has a little bit of a kick at the end, which is very interesting. So mix that with some white wine, a little bit of brandy, orange liqueur, and instantly you have a white wine sangria, which just completely changes the summer, the feeling of where you are. Just make it nice and refreshingly. And peep, the idea of having like a watermelon sangria with a little bit of a cayenne kick at the end of it, you're gonna be an absolute genius, but that's only because you have this, this bottle of Wonder Melon. Uh, it, it does it like instantly. And then you can do the same thing with the Beatology drinks too. And I know you're a big fan of it too, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm both those, both those. I mean, we, we love that. And I believe they're either low in sugar or no sugar or what, what's the status on those? There's no added sugar. sugar to it. So it's not like no they're sugar. adding the juice and they're adding sugar on top of it. Yeah. So there's no added sugar. And beet is naturally sweet as it is. One of the things that I love about Beatology juice, of course, it's bright red and there's, you know, all these antioxidants and whatever nutritional values that, that beets have it's wonderful but what i like to do with beetology for my kids is i take pancake batter mix and i instead of using milk i use beetology it adds not only sweetness to it but it turns it into like red velvet pancakes oh like they must love that do you have a... that it's like a cake that they're eating and it's not i'm, I'm literally putting like beetology beet juice inside of it and it's fantastic have you ever thought about adopting a 54 year old man that uh, could you could have an extra kid to cook for? I pay my own rent and utilities. Yeah, yeah. If you can pay this, <laughs> if you can pay this house's rent too, you're in. I think I used to. So there you go. So the drink looks amazing. Oh my god, I'm just looking yeah. at it, just going, just having uh, fits. Now what's going on with the chopped basil? And I think I see some peas. Are those peas there? Yeah, no, actually, what, what I made over here is a an herb pasta salad. And oh, okay. what, I, what, what I love about this herb pasta salad is that I usually, you know, I went to the market today and I found a jar of pesto and it was 10 bucks for a tiny little amount of pesto. Wow. And I couldn't believe how expensive pesto is these days. I mean, it, it usually is, but this was insane for 10 bucks. Um, so were you pesto instant, mystic about the price? I was not, uh, yeah, I was pesto mystic. Yes, thank you very much. Definitely not. Okay, I, I got that one. Very good. Boy, Chris, you are I have a fantastic show here. That's I love what these they for. Thanks. For yeah, sorry right. for interrupting. The big bucks, the big bucks. Yeah. So one of the things that I like to do, again, this is called Dorote Gardens, and they're herbs. They're frozen herbs. So think of it like a oh. ice cube tray, like a mini ice cube tray, and it lives in your freezer. You buy it in the freezer aisle. It lives in your freezer. Pop it in the freezer. And what you do is when you open it up, open up the package, you have these really cool little like ice cube oh. trays of, of herbs that are frozen. So yeah. in a pinch, you can literally go to you, whatever dish you're making. If you want to make a pesto, no problem. I'm going to go ahead and push one out for you so you can see if the YouTube folks can see over here. You literally yeah. push it out and out comes that piece of ice cube yeah. tray with yeah. the herb inside of it. They also have garlic, which is fantastic. The garlic is so, is so helpful because in a pinch, if you need a clove of garlic that is minced, it's right mm -hmm. here. Duro Gardens has it for you. It lives in the freezer. Ginger. Who on earth keeps ginger in their fridge at all times? And you know that ginger goes bad relatively quickly. Nobody has these herb gardens in their house floating around so you can go and snip it out. Instead, the rope garden makes it so much easier and accessible all year long to be able to go into your freezer and pull out. And then, so what I ended up making it is this wonderful uh, pasta salad with, ah, with what looks nice. like pesto, which actually is kind of, oh. it is pesto. And so I took the garlic. I popped the garlic in a bowl with a little bit of olive oil. I popped it in the microwave. You microwave it for a minute. So the microwave pretty much browns that garlic that is frozen. It browns wow. it perfectly. And then you add the rest of the herbs in there, parsley, basil, anything that you have with your oak gardens. You mix that up, add some Parmesan, a little lemon juice, pop it with your cooked pasta, a little bit of tomatoes and pine nuts. I'm telling you, this is like a pasta salad, not just for the summer, all year long you can serve it it's fantastic that looks amazing now are those jalapenos i see on there no I those see. are well you can see there's pine nuts and then there's that, that's the pesto that's just the penne pasta and ah. then uh, i i got some tomatoes now this is the oh the green right tomatoes now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful. I love green tomatoes. You know, I this is really important because during the summer, I will raise, I, I, I'm a real Caprese fan. So I make Caprese almost every day. And so I like I like fresh tomatoes and I like, you know, fresh bots, mozzarella. I, would, I almost want to make it myself one of these days. I got to learn. But then I also have fresh basil. But during the winter in Utah, you can't really do that. 
it all kind of goes away with the thing. So this is great to have this frozen food and all that good stuff. And what, what is the name of the brand of all this stuff that we're talking about today? Yeah, so it's Keiko. Keiko is the one who the, the, makes incredible products. A lot of them are kosher. And then they have kind of this Mediter Mediterranean flair to it, which I absolutely mm -hmm. love. So from the Mighty Sesame Tahini, they even have a spicy one with her, excuse me, Harissa inside of it. So it's just a nice little kick to it as well. So they really think about, you know, kind of worldly flavors. And again, this brings me back to my roots of going to culinary school in France. I really explored not just French cuisine, but a lot of European cuisine, going to culinary school there and visiting my friends in Spain and Portugal and Italy. The world has so many flavors to offer that we need to be kind of in touch with it. And I, I, I like, I love a good burger, but imagine putting some tahini, some spicy tahini on a burger. You would never think of doing anything like that. But let me tell you something, forget all your condiments and place and, and squeeze some of this mighty sesame tahini on a burger. The next time you make a burger, at least a bite of it, just taste it. And you're going to see it's going to transform the way your burger tastes forever you're going to be like the most original guy on the block with some tahini on top of your burger it's definitely good i guess man, i think it was a year or so ago time fly during covid so i lost track of time we had mike stamper the keiko beyond business general manager on the show and they sent us uh, several cases of the product and we loved them in fact we still use the tea the drinks went really fast and uh, where where can people see the products.com uh, for keiko and uh where can where can you usually find their products? I think I know locally here, but where, where can people usually find them? Honestly, I've been finding almost anything on Amazon. Amazon tends to have it. I know Walmart oh. carries a lot of these products. Whole Foods for sure carries the Mighty Sesame Tahini. You just have to do search. I don't know if you have things like Peapod and Instacart, you know, all these delivery services. Mm -hmm. Once you plug it in there, you, you'll find it instantly. It's available nationwide. Very convenient to be able to access it throughout the country. And that's, that's what I love about these products is that it's not just regional, it's nationwide. Yeah, I usually get it at my local Good Earth. I think Good Earth is a national thing. I'm seeing it here on Amazon too, which is good because yep. you know they buy everything on Amazon. But bee juice is really good for you. It's it's a it's a natural cleanser. I think there's a lot of other stuff. I mean, bee juice was one of the things that was keeping Steve Jobs alive in his final days or in his final years. He was drinking straight bee juice, but it's so hard to you know those things are tough as nails, man. They do not want to work with you, and so it's great you can have these products. All the products are really good. Like I like the spice products that Clayco had. There was the, the the cayenne one. I think there's another one that had some jalapeno or something. Maybe it was cayenne too, but just really good. And and I'm a guy who's veganese. Let's put it that way. I eat a salad. I eat a salad every day. I pretty much live on, I try not to eat any meat. You know, I've lost 75 pounds twice by going veganese okay. and then of course intermittent fasting. And so I try and eat really well. And so I was really love their products when they came across because uh, they can really help you, you know, getting away from the sugar and the sugar drinks <clears throat> is, it makes all the difference in the world. So you lean towards a better for you product. Tell us what that means to you and why that's evolved and why you, you kind of like these products uh, over other ones. I mean, why aren't you using like, uh, you know, Coke and... <laughs> Pepsi <laughs> recipes. Yeah. Well, you, you know, obviously all those all those products taste good. You know, a, sure. a soda tastes good. Pound of sugar our always tongues, tastes good. Our, our, our tongues are adapted to love sugar, salt, mm. and fat, even the combination, all the three. That's where we are programmed to love all that, which is very, you know, uh, it could easily lead to things like diabetes and heart disease and so on. But when you start looking at more natural products, really down to earth products, something like this a sesame seed that's been expelled to turn into a, a paste like tahini, um, mm -hmm. you will see that there's not only just nutritional facts, because you, when someone says the word diet, suddenly they're, they're recoiling and they're saying, uh, uh, not me. But if I could tell you that you can actually eat not only healthy, but also have really good tasting food or drinks like Beatology instead of soda or Mighty Sesame instead of mayo or processed, you know, sauces. It, it'll transform your life in the way you eat forever. It's not about just about, you know, being on a diet and restricting yourself and suffering through it. It's about having that balance with really good ingredients that will give you the same satisfaction, junk food and bad food for you. And you'll, you're still going to get actually a step above that because it's going to be more sophisticated 
integrated ingredient list. That's, and when mm -hmm. you cook yourself, and that's the other thing is that when you cook yourself, you're eating healthier without a doubt. Go to the go to any, not just fast food joint, but go to any restaurant. And the secret mm -hmm. to a good restaurant is the butter. It's the cream. It's the salt. It's the sugar that they shove in there. And the secret to good junk food and, and quick service restaurants is the high fructose corn syrup and the sugar mm -hmm. that they shove in there and the hydrogenated oils. That's the secret. That's why it tastes good. Of course, I like a good you know burger from a fast food joint make it yourself and not only are you taking time to look at the ingredients that are going in there you're fully controlling it and you're making it taste better 100 percent guaranteed there you go and i think i might have said clayco it's keiko k-a-y-c-o i might have slid an l in there but yeah i'm the the cool thing about the beat beat Ology products and some of the other juices they make is there's a variety of them so it's just not just beet juice there's a berry version beet and berry cherry and beet lemon ginger which is really good and beet you can get a variety pack you can get it with its beet and veggie and then the wonder lemon that you talked about on the show also comes uh well that's just wonder lemon there's the watermelon cucumber basil version yeah which is really tasty there's the watermelon lemon cayenne version these are all tasty like it the, the hardest part about it is that they tend to disappear really fast because they're so good. But the beautiful part is, too, is they're also not made from concentrate, which is one of the problems that, that you know, they, they have. They make it from concentrate. So it's not real juice. It's kind of like, you know, there's kind of a, a tweak to it. And this is all organic, too, by the way. It's organic. It's cold pressed. Obviously, no artificial colors, no flavors, mm -hmm. no artificial flavors. It is truly what the ingredients say it is. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, the idea of adding something small as like basil in there or cayenne pepper in there, it just elevates everything. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's not your boring watermelon juice, although I love watermelon juice, but it, it, it's kind of more of a, has a little twist to it. And um, you, you drink it right out of the bottle. It's refreshing. My kids absolutely adore it. Although I think they like the non-cayenne one better for obvious reasons. Hopefully they'll eventually <laughs> get the cayenne in there. The ones that I love too, that they sent us that we drank was, they also have a product called Wonder Lemon. It's in the same sort of bottles and they have it in three different versions. Lemon mint with let me yeah. tell you, oh my God, that is so awesome. There's lemon basil jalapeno and lemon ginger, and uh, I could just bathe in them. They're just so tasty. Yeah, uh, the lemon wonderful. mint is really good. The Wonder Lemon Lemon Mint is good because uh, I make margaritas with them. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I make mocktail margaritas for my kids and mm -hmm. then the non-mocktails for my wife and I. And I literally have it in martini glasses. We have these plastic martini glasses that are great for <laughs> outdoor use. And I serve it like a martini to my children, and they absolutely adore it. And there we are, all four of us drinking martinis. And mind you, if somebody walks in and watches my kids drinking, quote unquote, a martini, even though it's a mocktail, they would just absolutely freak out. But it's so much fun because they kind of feel like adults. They're having something all natural and tastes good. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's just fun. It's kind of a fun drink to have around. And you literally keep it in your fridge, pop it out and make yourself a nice little drink with it. Yeah. So you're eating good. You're eating healthy. You're not eating 50 pounds of sugar and, you know, all the all the crap they can sneak into some food. You know, you're eating good stuff and you know your kids are eating good stuff. And, and that's probably important, too, because I've seen, you know, what a three-year-old does if he gets a hold of a can of Coke with all that sugar and, you know, shoots off into space, you know. I think that's how Elon Musk gets a SpaceX uh, planes <laughs> off the ground. He just throws a three-year-old in there and gives him a can of Coke or two. So uh, this is really insightful. The other question I had for you is any more great ideas for fall parties and stuff? And how do I get on your party list to uh, barbecue <laughs> and stuff? I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> Dude, it's fall. That means it's harvest season. That means that when you go to a mm. farmer's market and find your local farmer's market, it's so important to do that because not only are you supporting local foods, your local farmers, but you're getting the freshest of the fresh. And, and maybe sometimes some of the farmer's market, particularly here in New York City, can be a little bit more expensive, worth every penny in my opinion. And you can be very picky about what you choose. You don't have to go straight ahead and go for the apple pie that costs 50 bucks. You can go actually find amazing apples this time of year or as September rolls along into October and make yourself the apple pie. Like I said, make it yourself, have a little bit of some shortcuts and mm -hmm. I guarantee you the flavor is gonna be better the, the nutritional benefits are going to be enormous. And you're, you're doing yourself a favor. You're doing your family a favor of actually putting mm -hmm. food together with some shortcut hacks 
and fresh foods from the farmer's market. And, and that's what I love to do is I told my son the other day, we were, they were going to the farmer's market last Saturday and, and he said, dad, are you coming with us? I said, that's like me telling you that we're going to a toy store and you're not going to come with us. Like, <laughs> of course, the farmer's market is my toy store. Like I go there and my wife is like, don't spend too much. And, and that's out the window. And I'm like, no, I'm a child with money and I'm going <clears> to <throat> spend all I want in this farmer's market because this is the time of year to go out and get some fresh produce. The farmer's market is like your uh, wife's target. The uh, You know, you bring up a good point, and this is really a thing that I, I stress to people. One of the, I, we had a major fasting author on the show for his new book uh, that's coming out September 6th yesterday. And one of the things we talked about that I learned in going veganese and losing weight is we eat a lot for taste. Like no one's sitting around going, I want to shove a Franken meat burger McDonald's thing into my gut so that I have terrible heartburn and my my insides twist inside out because that sounds like a fun day. We eat for that taste. You know, my mom's really funny. She's, I think she's 80 years old now and she'll she'll put food in her mouth, taste it for a while, especially chocolate and then spit it out. <laughs> <She's> just, <laughs> because she realizes she likes the taste. I mean, yeah. that's really what it's about. You eat a yeah. McDonald's burger because you like that secret sauce and the salt and the, you know, the flavoring, but you, you really shouldn't put it inside your body. It's kind of like lead. So <laughs> it probably processes like lead in your system. So, but you may explain a few things in my life, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, uh, we eat for taste. And so when you can hack, one of the things I learned was how to hack my taste buds and make, like you just said, great healthy food that tastes great and your body actually responds to it and goes wow this healthy food tastes better than the mcdonald's thing so let's do this yeah you know there, there are a lot of hacks out yeah. there and one of the ones that is really important is you know lo lowering your sodium intake or your fat intake just kind of balancing it out and herbs are the way to go for me garlic herbs ginger all these things just this add flavor lemon lemon alone adds flavor to pretty much anything mm. so instead of eating a fried fish that's been battered and fried grill the fish and add at the very last second add a big squirt of lemon on top of it or or mm. get some garlic and and fry it up or, or put it in the microwave with the, the olive oil and, and, the, and the frozen garlic and, uh, and pop that just drizzle it on top of the fish a little bit of lemon those flavor enhancers that are really truly all natural will make you eat healthier without a doubt it is more difficult to fry a fish in your own home that's why it's there's so much temptation out there and it's all about trying mm -hmm. to keep away from that temptation and let me tell you something i struggle with eating overeating too i struggle with it all the time i mean there's food in this country food is everywhere food is king you can't walk into the supermarket mm -hmm. hungry you cannot do that because that is dangerous and you will end up buying stuff that you should not be eating so Make sure you're full when you jump into the supermarket. Look for foods high in fiber, as they say. If you want a sweet treat, damn it, get that sweet treat, but have it in moderation towards the end of your meal and, and take it easy with, with the processed foods. And, you know, just take it easy. Have some processed foods. Okay, fine. You need it. That's fine. Because if you start saying the word diet, people start freaking out. And like I said, you just you, you, it's a recipe for disaster, the word diet. Mm -hmm. Make it a way of life and, and kind of have a balance as much as you can. Add those extra ingredients like the tahini. You know, use the betology juice versus the sodas. Make sure you have herbs in your, in your freezer at all times so you can just pop a herb or garlic in there just to enhance the flavor of something that needs more oil or more salt or more frying. And instead, you're going to use these other tricks like herbs and lemon and pine nuts and tomatoes to add more more flavor to it there you go there you go and it, it's just all about those hacks and your body will love you too like when you eat good foods your body loves you and every now and then you eat something bad and you're like what have i done i've made a mistake and you realize you know don't don't do that anymore your body will love you your 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 health will love you long term etc cetera, etc cetera. so what more do you have planned for your career and what's next after you know pinnacling here at the chris wash show yeah, I'm currently pitching a couple shows to Netflix right now, and hopefully those will come to fruition in the coming months. But we'll see where that goes. In the meantime, again, I'm doing a lot of segments on Good Morning America, a lot of morning shows constantly going out there and kind of cooking thematic foods. Thanksgiving is coming up, the best mm. holiday on the planet. My kids disagree with me. So I, I'm for sure, I'm, I'm already starting to plan out, like I, I'm getting my mental focus on like Halloween because Halloween is the next big holiday mm. for food, so to speak. So I'm starting to also already think about like, you know, how can I roast butternut squash and add tahini on top of it or make it something with herbs? How can I get like those fall flavors going? It's still a little bit warm here in New England, but when that first kind of crisp cold air hits, 
man, it is the best season because it's harvest season. It's getting a little bit crisp, cold. The holidays are coming. This is this is this is my Super Bowl. Let's put it that way. There you go. Yeah, my my October parties were the biggest. The Halloween parties, biggest of the year. I used to throw a lot of parties. How, what what is the rental apartment rental situation in your area that I can maybe move to so I can get invited to parties? No, I'm just kidding. Don't worry. You cannot afford it. I can tell you right now. Nobody can afford it this day and age. <laughs> That's true. It's crazy. That's here. true. I think I have a spare kit I can sell. Anyway, let's see. <laughs> Anybody like Huskies? Who wants to buy a Husky? Anyway, it's been wonderful to have you on the show. Very insightful. And you've made me incredibly hungry. So if you listen to this on the audio version, go watch the YouTube version. You can see the beautiful food that was laid out before us. Give us your .com so, and, and uh, Keiko's.com so we can find out more about you and them on the internet. Yeah, just go to georgeduran.com or, or go any social media and look for Chef George Duran. There you go. There you go. Thank you very much, Chef, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Take care. There you go. And I missed it at the top of the show, and it probably is officially tomorrow or we'll just celebrate tomorrow. But the as of today, the Chris Voss Show podcast turns 13 years old. 13 years old. And I'm sick of it already. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. We just doubled and a half last year's numbers. We've been doing that every year for the last three years and just a pile of millions more downloads. So thank you. We certainly appreciate you. And now I'm going to go drink after 13 years. <laughs> so thank you all. For further sharing your family, friends, and relatives, be good to each other, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.